today's session we will talk on written and unwritten languages talking is universal every human being learns to talk unless something is very wrong every society in the world has a spoken language the foundation for language is sounds sounds make phonemes the phonemes in turn make up words the words then sentences and so on sentences fully describe a thought as expression of thoughts a language is a collection of sentences to express human thoughts through writing symbols that represent sounds words or phonemes are needed these symbols have to be of course understood by the users of the language languages that have these symbols are called written languages whereas those that do not have them are known simply as spoken languages Linguistic anthropology is a branch of anthropology that focuses on how people use languages in particular cultures. They study both written and unwritten languages. They often work with people who have unwritten or purely spoken or oral languages or with languages that very few people speak. Linguistic anthropological work may involve developing a way to write a formally unwritten language. Cultures often use these written versions to teach their children the language and thus keep it in use. Some linguistic anthropologists are specialized in reconstructing that languages that is languages no longer in use and their connections to living languages a study known as historical linguistics linguistic anthropologists as well as many cultural anthropologists use a variety of methods to analyze the details of a people's language The practice of phonology for example involves precisely documenting the sound properties of spoken words many linguistic anthropologists also practice orthography the technique of creating written versions of spoken languages In addition, most study the properties of grammar in languages, looking for the rules that guide how people communicate their thoughts through string of words. Now, let us see what is spoken language and speech communication all about. We can briefly state that some of the most important features of speech communication in the following points. Number 1, speech is a dynamic ephemeral behavior distributed in time. It proceeds continuously and its inherent dynamics, the changes at various levels must be subject to online monitoring and analysis. by both communicating parties as one goes on one can no longer observe that which was produced earlier second point speech behavior has many features of continuous movements rather than a chain of successive states 
third point, the whole interaction between speaker and listener is dependent on the situation or context in many extremely important ways. Number fourth point is, communication through speech is a resource available for all normally equipped human beings across different social groups and cultures. Unlike speech, written texts are typically not perceived and interpreted at the same times and places as they are produced. The analysis of written language, both by the linguists and normal users or readers, necessarily focuses on the products of the writer's activities, that is, on the written text. The written text can be used in different ways, re-employed, duplicated, distributed to particular persons or groups in new situations, and these activities can be regarded as proper communicative acts in their own right or as parts of such acts. Now, let us talk about the difference between speech communication and written communication. In the global context, written and unwritten languages fall on two sides of watershed in terms of expressive power, prestige, cultural capital and institutional protection. Writing, far from being a mere mapping of speech, giving it visible form, transforms speech and works as a scaffold, propping up the construction work in progress and leading the builders to proceed in certain ways rather than others. High prestige languages are invariably written and classical languages are by definition so. Writing affords a language discernibility, respect and in many ways its very existence. More obviously than language, writing is an artifact. All writing systems are the product of a process of selection and are being influenced by social, political, scientific, religious and practical considerations. With the advance of literacy, the differences between written and unwritten languages become more conspicuous and more relevant for a greater number of people for to become literate implied for speakers of unwritten languages to acquire a second language. As a consequence, many unwritten languages have been reduced to writing in modern times. Some of the differences between written and unwritten languages which can be mentioned here are number first point, a written text and its component parts that is letters, words, sentences, paragraphs etc. have the character of objects they are persistent and static. Second point, the written text is made up of discrete symbols, that is, letters, at least in print, and graphics or words, and these are organized in certain regular spatial patterns. These symbols are the approximate counterparts of only some of the structural, that is, segmental, phonological, grammatical, lexical features of spoken language. Third point, unlike spoken utterances, a written text lacks an immediate context. 
a written text as a rule and in comparison with spoken utterances relatively explicit and relatively autonomous or context free furthermore the medium of writing is adapted for a monologic function normally the sender the writing individual works alone and the same applies to the receiver fourth point the acquisition of the ability to read and write is quite different from learning to speak and understand speech the acquisition of written language belongs to the so called secondary socialization in which school and other cultural institution play a very important instrumental part thus while spoken language is largely every man's property written language is the belonging of only rather few people written languages is mainly used in the non private life sphere and again unlike spoken language it is not integrated with everyday knowledge and culture but is associated mostly with various kinds of abstract knowledge separate from the world of direct experience it must be admitted of course that the differences between spoken and written languages are not always and everywhere very clear cut there are spoken genre in which language is used very much as in certain written styles and conversely writing can sometimes be deliberately used for mirroring certain speech styles moreover historically there must have existed transitory forms or how else could we explain the invention and development of written languages in cultures that were originally entirely oral in nature when writing is taught a number of more or less explicit norms or rules are referred to and these norms will therefore be partly conscious to the language users this in turn is related to still other important properties of written language some of the properties of written language are number 1 written language is more constrained by rules and conventions than spoken language especially as regards its form second point in general there is less variation that is less dialectal and idiolectal variation and more invariance in written language except perhaps in advanced literacy uses especially poetry third point the conditions under which written language is generally taught have promoted the quite common belief that some variants of written language represents the grammatical correct language whereas many variants of spoken language are incorrect defective incoherent ugly and or rude for various reasons it is not possible to be precise about the number of languages in the world but most philologists agree that there are about 6000 to 7000 living languages these languages are divided 
into about 100 language families. The exact number is dependent on a classification paradigm. The major language families can be further divided into groups of languages that are also called families. How many written languages are there then? The precise answer is elusive. One would expect that the written languages to be easier to count than unwritten ones because writing distinguishes them from one another. The most extensive survey ever done on written languages of the world was undertaken by the Centre International de Recherche sur le Bilinguisme at Laval University. It describes in great detail the methodological difficulties of determining what counts as a written language and to what extent a language is actually used in writing. The degree of use of a language for literary functions is an important variable which has a bearing both on its social status and on structure and language change. The written languages that are all actually employed for all literary functions are a select group. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights of 1948 is available in some 300 languages. Now, let us talk about the different types of writing systems. In comparison to spoken language, writing is relatively new. It was invented for the first time by the Sumerians or Mesopotamia in about 3200 BC. Indians of Mexico invented it independently around 600 BC and the rise of Egyptian and Chinese systems may have been independent as well. There are three types of writing systems in the world. They are logographic, syllabic and alphabetic. In the logographic system, one symbol represents one word. The old Chinese writing system is one example. Logographic systems are the most intuitive from the perspective of the society on the cusp of developing writing and thus they tended to be first to arise. They also are most logical next step from the marking system used by merchants and accountants. Incidentally, the fact that Chinese is a logographic system is one piece of evidence for its independent invention. Syllabic. In the syllabic system, a symbol represents not a sound but a phoneme. In this system, the number of symbols needed for a given language is determined by a number of basic sounds used. The third system of writing, the alphabetic system, 
is the most difficult to invent and the easiest to use. Many linguists believed it was invented only once by the Phoenicians and then spread or adapted to other languages. Its most basic units do not correspond to anything meaningful in speech, but rather to an isolated sound. Moreover, when each letter represents a certain sound, pronunciation is more easily inferred from the structure of that word. Anthropological linguists see languages as a vital part of culture. Knowledge of language is required to completely understand and analyze the culture. They are also concerned with describing many languages and issues such as the influence of language on the behavior of the community that uses it. Also finding a systematic way of putting down previously unwritten languages in a way that would reflect all linguistic peculiarities and phonetic phenomena is the task of anthropological linguists.